Here's a video on the DN8 that I flatted and painted the roof anthracite and the rear spoilers. Decided to go all the way along there with the anthracite. I think the original one may have ended and gone down there, but I just prefer to do it all the way along there, keep it in the loop. But anyway, it's painted on Sunday, just over two days ago. Obviously, I was that eager. I thought I'd come in after work and polish all the awkward bits around the back. All this bit around here, all this has all been flatted all around there, all up into the number plate, all the way around. And you can see the shine. Virtually like a mirror. I haven't done this section yet. So I'm leaving it for a week to do the main body to harden off a bit more. But I've just done some of the awkward parts. It's going back onto its rear wheels, so I thought I'd decide to do the bottom half, just here, on the flat part of the bumper, to see what that would look like. See if I can get an angle with a light on it. There we go. You can see where I've done to, there's the line. So it will all be like that. If it starts going up to the original, you can see it's a bit orange peely, a few bits, but obviously that's because there's four coats. I put four coats on with the idea of having to block it and flat it, because this is the sort of finish that I was after, dead flat. Do the same with the rest of the car. Roof, a few bits in the roof. A few bits in the car itself. But as I say, I'm leaving the car to go off a little bit longer before it's blocked. Block flatted. Okay, I'll just run through the process. Same on this side. You can see the line there. Them are flatting marks. That's where I've done up to. As I say, it's going up back onto the wheels. So instead of having to try and lie on the floor or jack it up in the workshop, I thought I'd do the awkward bits now. So same again, all that corner, block flatted, 1000 wet and dry. You really need to use quite a strong grit paper. I don't agree with 600 or 800, but 1000 minimum, 1200 maybe. Because basically all that does is, it knocks all down the orange peel, gives it a nice flat finish, gets rid of any dirt or trash in the paint and then when you go over it with 1500, 2000 and 2500 basically all you're doing then is polishing up a flat surface. The trouble starting with 1500 and 2000 is it doesn't cut through the paint all it basically does is takes the top off it, the shine. So when you buff it back up, you're still left with an orange peely, unflat surface. Okay, so that's that. Here's the section in the middle, number plate section that we did. All the way around the exhaust. All in there. All up there. You can 
see the shine of everything. You can see the shine of me in there. The light. This is a truly flat finish. There you go. To the line. Back to the old paint. Flatted. Mop. Old paint. And line to finish. Okay, as I said, basically, start with a thousand. Thousand grit wet and dry. Clean bucket, everything washed out, a little bit of soapy water, you can use a little bit of wash and wax or you, you can use, if you're only using a small bit, a little bit of fairy liquid, not much, just a couple of drops, just to put a little bit of foam in the water. Okay, so that's a thousand wet and dry. From the thousand wet and dry, we went on to 1500 wet and dry. Then from 15 to 2000, then from 2000 to 2500. Then once that was done, we used Bucket Trizac P3000 fine finishing discs. Those are a soft finishing pad and you use that on a DA orbital sander. With a foam interface pad. What this does is, you use it very, very slowly. It doesn't need to be fast. This is on the slowest setting. And what this does basically, it buffs up the paint and it takes out any minor scratches there might be. So that when you come to use your polishing, okay, sealer, variable speed polisher, the green pad that's on it is for the 3M fast cut. The first pad you use is a white for Reckler cutting compound pad. That's after the Hook It Trizac discs. Then after that, and you're happy, no scratches, nice and flat and glossy. Then go over it with a green pad using 3M Fast Cut Plus. Then once that's done, change the pad again for a 3M finishing pad and 3M Ultrafina SE. Basically that is an anti-hologram polish. What that means is that once you've done all your polishing, when you look in the sunlight sometimes you get swirl marks in certain cars. That basically is to take out any swirl marks. It does work. It's very, very hard work to get it looking right, but it does work and it's a good finish. Also, for any small areas that was struggling to get into, areas like in there, around there, and in there, you can't get in there with a normal size polisher. We have a mini three inch air sander, well it's an air polisher, adjustable, okay, with a compounding head, also I have a wall head as well, but that there fits nicely into all the small little grooves. The last thing you want to do is start trying to get in there with a big polisher and burn through. Other option, do by hand, which there is some areas that I do do by hand, but I've used a polisher on most of them. Why make it hard when you've got a tool to make it easy? Okay, that's it for now. Hopefully tomorrow I'll be going across all the rear bumper 
so the whole rear bumper will be cut and polished. Okay, thank you.